right, fans here. Our bags are packed. We're ready to head to Montreal, Canada tomorrow to do a Kill Tony there. Uh, Ryan J. Ebelt's here drawing tonight's episode of the amazing new Kill Tony five-year poster that I yeah. just got framed up on my wall. Nice, nice yellow frame. Yellow you posted frame. that. Yeah. That's a great idea. It looks great on I it. went to the actual frame store and I took a bunch of different colors and styles of frames and I did that shit for like seven minutes until I found the right frame. Anyway, it's pretty exciting. Let's talk more about frames. I framed it right. Uh, we're going to Montreal for our big show uh, in two days at the Plaza des Arts on July 25th, this Wednesday. And then next week we could take the show to uh, Cleveland, Ohio. For those of you listening, perhaps maybe you're watching streaming from all the way from Ohio. Maybe you're uh, anywhere. We're going to Cleveland August 1st to do a Kill Tony there. We do stand-up in Cleveland on the 2nd. And then we do Kill Tony and stand-up the next night. August 3rd in Cincinnati, Ohio. And then August 4th, we do Kill Tony, and I think I have a set. That seems to be the general consensus in Fort Wayne, Indiana at a festival there. And uh, August 9th and 11th, we do Stand Up in Lexington. And then we do a Kill Tony August 12th in Nashville. And then September 20th, 21st, and 22nd, we're in Michigan at Lansing, Grand Rapids, and Detroit. And then we go to Toronto, the 25th through the 29th at JFL 42, Toronto. Our Kill Tony is on the 28th. That's a Friday night at midnight. I'm pretty excited to have a big, fancy midnight Kill Tony yeah. in Toronto. Jesus, it's one of the first fun. places we ever took it on the road. It was chaos then, four years ago. And it's certainly going to be chaos. We should, we should just actually do our dates when we're back in L.A. <laughs> it seems like it's... Do our dates when Never. No idea what you just There's so many dates we should just say, hey, we're back in LA for one week in August, four days in July. But that's not true at all. We're in town every Monday for Kill Tony. Wow, you're really sending a mixed message. It was a Brock. joke, Jesus. I didn't get it. <laughs> just so that you're not confused listening to the podcast, we do the show back in LA every single Monday for the foreseeable future. Who knows when we're going to Australia or London, and then, that, then we might miss a Monday, but you'll know about that because we're going to plug that shit for four months before we go there. <laughs> But tonight's about tonight, right? We are in the main room of the comedy store. I have a bucket filled with comedians' names. It might be somebody's first sign. It might be a goddamn veteran that's just been waiting to make their breakthrough on Kill Tony. You never know what's going to happen. And uh, every week, I always have two of the funniest comedians in the world on this show to talk to people and meet people with us. This one's super fucking special because these guys are truly two of the funniest human beings in the world. Comedy store fucking monsters. They have an unbelievable podcast and so many funny things. Make some noise for the great Ryan O'Neill and Jeff Danish, everybody. Here we are. Danish and O'Neill, comedy store built fucking thoroughbreds. Guys that were hosting the open mic when I started. Ryan O'Neill, the first to ever bring me up for my first time ever doing stand-up. That is true, I was. That was your very first time. You brought like 15 people, I had no choice. That's the right. Entire that's, audience. That's how I do it, you know what I mean? I always have a support system with me. That's what the, tonight is. All these people are here to laugh at me. But shizzle dizzle. You've upped it from 15 to however many are here tonight. Yeah, you, exactly. You succeed? We're increasing. Uh, you guys are hilarious. Always have Thank been. You, sir. Always will be. True. Uh, an unbelievable comedy story MCs, which is where this sort of stemmed from, was me hosting a lot, watching people do three minutes, and then we go up and down. And shitting on them for the next six. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pretty like, much. Why give them three when we can give them one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And just fly through it. So I'm excited you guys are back. Ryan O'Neill, for those of you that might not know, is fighting Louis J. Gomez. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, who here is a Louis J. Gomez fan? Who here is a Ryan O'Neill fan? Ah, oh, look at that. You're getting, you're getting the you're getting, you're getting, getting Kill Tony bump tonight. Yes, I definitely have. <laughs> Louis J didn't even do our podcast when we were at Skankfest. He was down there weighing in with you. What a pussy. Yeah, exactly. We had the rest of the Skanks on. That was a lot of fun. Are you nervous about this at all? Like, do you, I mean, are you second guessing this whole fight? Not at all, man. Yeah. I fucking feel great. Yeah. I, I you feel better every day now. And I feel fucking great. Do you feel better now that after being in New York and like seeing him in person? Yeah, yeah. And seeing how fat he is? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> seeing how much he drinks? 
Do you feel how little willpower he has? Absolutely. Do you feel he might use any Puerto Rican advantages? Like perhaps being I'm not able sure there to... are any advantages to being Puerto Rican. Well, I, I heard that the way that they like to fight is they like to make sure that the power is turned off and yeah. just take you on in the dark. You might make like a shank out of his fingernails or something. <laughs> they keep it very in their shoe. Well, this is just a taste of some of the fun that we're going to have tonight. Uh, and the show also has a band, everybody, every single week. I don't know if they were always doing this last time you guys were here, but the band guys, they come in to different characters every week, and you never know what they're going to be. Maybe they're policemen or, uh, you know, uh, what were they, uh, the guy from Hogwarts or whatever? The guy from Hogwarts? <laughs> yeah. You were nurses last I mean, week. Harry Potter? That guy? <laughs> Yes, that is what I meant. Uh, fuck yeah. Um, uh, so we don't know what they're gonna do, so let's see what they're gonna do. This is the Kill Tony Band. Jeremiah Watkins, Joel Burke, Joel Jimenez, and Chrome Chris. with male names and then three hot fucking ladies. <laughs> yeah, this is crazy. Damn. Damn. Ladies, I'm pretty sure that's Emo Phillips over there. <laughs> that's uh, Pinocchio meets. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have- You're uh, telling a lot of lies with that nose. What the fuck? <laughs> and then we have uh, on guitar, clearly we have a uh, Dog the Bounty Hunter's wife. <laughs> Bel Belsa? <laughs> The production looks great, Beth. Is that what his wife's name is? Beth, oh yeah, Beth the Bounty Hunter. She got it legally changed. And then, uh, and then back here we have the lead singer from System of a Down. Uh, <laughs> Alright, this party's out This looks like control. the worst episode of To Catch a Predator of all time. <laughs> Just come in, guys. Come wear your costume. The only thing you're catching is gonorrhea. <laughs> Snow White, uh, how's it going up there? Oh, so well, Tony. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> you couldn't, couldn't find high heels. Committed everywhere else, but none of them found you. Well, I am very poor. <laughs> oh, it's for those of you that know the history of Snow White, I believe she was a pretty poor. <laughs> Tell you, retard. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know. But the guy from Hogwarts was called Harry Potter, I mean. All right, uh, so we have a bucket full of comedians' names. They get to perform in front of uh, the, com the comedy store is great. And uh, some Disney females. And uh, you get 60 seconds, people. You know your 60 seconds is up and you hear the sound of a kitten. That means wrap it up then or else you're gonna bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. Stick to your goddamn time. We'll interview you about the rest of your thoughts. Afterwards. You guys ready for this shit? It's Kill Tony Live. <laughs> Into the bucket we go. And your first person breaking the ice tonight goes by the name of John Joan Smith. John Joan. John John. It's J O N N E, the second one. I'll use it that John. He's definitely lost. I'll tell you who's not lost is uh, this guy who's been on the show multiple times. Always funny. Put your hands together for Mikey McKernan. Yeah. 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 One more time, friend, I have a pre-show. It's really happy to be here tonight. Uh, I love doing stand-up comedy on the road because a lot of girls think of the guy from Workaholics. <laughs> That's awesome because sometimes uh, you don't make enough money on these gigs, so you get excited when a girl asks you to come back after a gig. And this one night, things got pretty serious. And then they got a romantic. <laughs> And then after two hours of dry humping, she finally told me she was a virgin. I don't know what to say. I was like, well, every time a virgin doesn't put out, an angel loses a boner. 
because she was a Christian girl. And that confused me because I was like, what am I doing to attract Christian girls? <laughs> There you go, Mikey McCartney. You get a Jesus impression there at the end, and you fucking nailed it, dude. Thank you. <laughs> Little prop comedy. Yeah. Tom, or Tony, that was his first time not doing his signature. Uh, the Buhas. Yeah. What's his signature? He's, uh, sometimes he would uh, end a joke and sort of be like, all like, Can we get an uh, idea? What? Can we, you do a joke and then? Yeah, can you do it? Can you do another yeah, joke that ends in the boo ha? I actually do it's Snow White kind of yeah. stepping in. She knows that she knows your teeth. Right when I thought I was gonna do something different, it's like it's back to a boo. I uh I choked on a granola bar while jogging. Worst running gag ever. Oh, ah. The people love it, man. I'm so honored to be in front of Dana Shamil. These guys are goddamn fucking legends. You're damn right they are. You look like a uh, fourth generation Confederate flag maker. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have to know uh, what's in your back pocket. Uh, it says stickers that says I'm not funny. <laughs> That's his name. It's not funny. You want to yeah, I, I, I can't give them out anymore because if they're show up on this place, I get in a lot of trouble. That's true, you don't want them to show up here. It's an old building. Um, well, okay. What else has changed in life since the last time that you've been on? Normally you work at, uh, try, to, try to wrap your heads around this, guys. He works at uh, Bubba Gum Shrimp Factory in a real life. Hey, at Santa Monica on the pier? Which no, one? Universal Shitty. Oh, okay, the good one. Do you at least walk around on your knees like your Lieutenant Dan? <laughs> <laughs> you have a look. This is great. Some servers have one. Like... <laughs> You're the only server there that probably looks identical to him. That was a good Halloween costume. And then you could be like, you want the shrimp? And you <laughs> I got recognized from Kill Tony literally on Sunday. Uh, while at working? Bubba Gumps. Yeah. Wow. I bet the person probably went there trying to see if you were working there. They said they were hoping to run into me. Wow. Yeah. Shout out to John and Jacob. Wow. John and Jacob. I believe uh, he missed his spot. <laughs> <laughs> No, but uh, I broke up with my girlfriend. Whoa, wow. I went from Bubba Gump to Bubba Dump. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> How did this go down? Now, it would remind us of the situation. You were with her for a while. I think she also worked there or something like that. Yeah, five years. I met her there. Wow. Yeah, I trained her and bought weed off her the first night. Well, oh, that's romance. That's how my parents met. Oh, yeah. Wow, true love. I think she's like, I've learned all I can learn about Bubba Gump from you. Time to move on. Absolutely. Is that why you're not doing the voice on stage right now? You're tired, you're broken inside, and you're... No, I, uh, I just told myself there's going to be, next time there's going to be no boo Wow. Wow. Do you, yeah. do you still see her? Does she still work there? No, no, no. So she, how'd the, how the no. breakup go down? I literally just was like, uh, yeah, we're, this is not going to be forever. You're a terrible lover. And then you were all like, wow, did you have to lie? It's very vague, though. That could be like six oh, months. No, I, I mean, there was a... Funny... My prince will come. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, there was... There you was... told her you were, she was a terrible lover? Yeah, no, did you told... Did you at least go, boo, ha, afterwards? <laughs> no, she, immediately after we broke up, she posted that she didn't have to pretend that she thought it was funny anymore. Oh. <laughs> You were with her for five years? Yeah. So how, it took you that long to yeah. realize she was a terrible lover? <laughs> what the fuck? You're, you're yeah. slow. Move slow. Well, why is like, she like, a bad lover? Let me try lover? one more time to see if she can step it up. One more. What makes her a bad lover? She yeah. just laid there? Uh, no, she said she just laid there. Sex was not... <laughs> it's not a happy place for her to go to. Wow. You, so, Jesus, what, were you raping her? What no, that no, was her <laughs> past. You met her at Bubba Gump and you're surprised she was a dead fish? Oh, you didn't think that she had it all together? <laughs> Were you guys both wearing your uniforms? <laughs> no, no. Tying those aprons together? She was not into any of that. Wow. Yeah, what did she, she put in, in, on her Facebook? She said she doesn't have to pretend you're not funny anymore. Yeah, she thought, yeah. You still follow her on Facebook? No, no, not anymore. So someone told you that she said that on Facebook? Yeah, there's, there's a couple people who keep reminding me. It's my coworkers, <laughs> actually. Whatever, you know, like... A week later, too, she like had to come back and get the rug, and she like ripped me apart again. Oh, wow. Is this the Big Lebowski? <laughs> you love the rug so much that you're like, I gotta get that rug back. Well, you're not keeping that. It wasn't even her. She wanted one last flop from the 
tremendous lover over here. I didn't even <laughs> How do you know that you weren't the bad lover? Oh, Ooh, deep question. That's... Um, I, don't, I don't have video of Okay, let me fuck her, and then let me fuck you, and then I'll decide. <laughs> It's a hot emotion in the ocean. Nobody knows that better than a guy that works in a fucking <laughs> public life. Is your story true about the virgin? That you uh, yeah, that's that's true. Did she, she was a virgin. How old was she? She no, was 28. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow, you yeah. took a girl's virginity? No, I, I didn't go through with it. Oh. Yeah, she didn't want to stick around for the resurrection. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He arched his backpack and ran into Jeremiah so trying to do a boo. Boo? You broke a princess's foot, you bitch. <laughs> wow. All right, Mikey. Well, uh, another fun set. Always a fun interview. He's a good guy. He's yeah. like a good guy. He's a badass motherfucker. We love it now. So, so, yeah. It's Mikey McCurdy, everyone. said like this guy's been on the show before like 10 people all stood up and thought they're like it's my time to shine that's how it happened too these guys have got damn wolverines say it again this guy's been on the show multiple times i don't uh i don't know if we've met this guy before put your hands together for nathan driver nathan driver there we go I'm not. Oh, I thought it was a Nathan Driver. Yeah, I thought there was two. Get so it's get that fuck off stage. It's not me. I thought the. There you go. You gotta go. There he goes. Wait, 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 wait. There goes Nathan, somebody else. Keep going. There he goes. It's all good. It's Just gotta Nathan. listen. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the real Nathan Driver. You gotta like politics. My dad got on Facebook in 2018. It's actually how I found out he was a Trump supporter. Uh, there were signs, there were definitely signs before that. My dad's a big NASCAR fan. Uh, his favorite race is the Daytona, Daytona 500. And his least favorite race is Hispanic people. <laughs> Ooh, I'm nervous. Okay. Uh, I, I live at home right now with my parents. It's kind of interesting dynamic. Uh, my mom's this real like, hippie liberal. My dad's a staunch conservative Christian. They're always getting these little fights. Like their biggest fight was over whether or not to get me circumcised. Uh, my dad would say, you know, it's in the Bible, it's what we should do. My mom would say, uh, it's genital mutilation, it's cruel, he doesn't have a lot there. Are you sure we should be taking it away? <laughs> they thought about this forever, man. But it was my dad. My dad went out in the end. Uh, they, they decided to get me circumcised. So they booked a church, they hired a pastor, even ordered a bunch of food. Uh, if you guys are doing anything this weekend. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, you know, I was actually thinking about that as well. What do you think? You think we should do it? I'll leave it up to our guests. All right, for the, for the first ever time in uh, Kill Tony history, this is an official Nathan off. No, you stay up here, Nathan Driver. You, you stand on the other side of Joel Berg, yeah? Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the other Nathan Driver, everyone. Here we go. Let's see what happens. This has worked. Uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, so I'm half Filipino, half white. Uh, I'll be whatever you want me to be. I'm pretty insecure. Uh, my mom grew up poor in the Philippines and worked really hard so that I could grow up middle class, which is awesome. Give it up for my mom. Yeah. But now the only thing is, no matter how successful I get, nothing will compare to me coming from the Philippines. So growing up for me was like I started a new video game, but with my mom's memory card. Because no matter what level I get to, she could be like, yeah, but that's because I beat most of the game for you. The only reason you're in college is because I beat Manny Pacquiao on hard mode. And I gotta be like, yeah, but you did marry a white dude, so that is kind of like a cheat code. So, pretty sure that's game over, bitch. Too. I want to apologize for bringing up the Nathan off. Yeah. <laughs> Nathan too wore his good pajama pants here, so he was ready to get up on stage. Nathan too, uh, it did not go great for you. Snow White, what do you think about this? I like the white one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
So let's see how the interview portion goes. How about this? Every time uh, I ask a question, uh, Nathan one answers first, and then as soon as he's done, Nathan two, you answer the exact same question. You guys ready for this? It's a goddamn Nathan off. Is your first name actually Nathan, or you just Nathan what? What's your last name? Nathan Bosher. And you but if anybody said Nathan, you were just like, I'm taking this shit tonight. Your handwriting is so bad that Bosher could turn into driver? Yeah. Fucking like David Blaine. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I know. Uh, I know sometimes when I, you know, when you order an Uber, you never know when the Bosher is going to pull up and uh, you have to get into it. I really think these two guys should combine forces because this guy's got confidence, but this guy has better jokes. Yeah, it's true. Uh, this guy's got better credits. He was on King of the Hill as the Native American son of that guy. <laughs> You don't talk to Mowgli like that. All right, Nathan Driver, step up to the mic. Uh, how long you been doing? Uh, how long you been doing stand up? Nathan, get back over there. Nathan, two, get your so, ass back over there. Nathan for two. On Comedy Central. So you answer the question, then Seven you months. step in and answer the same question. How Seven long you been months. doing? How long? Seven months. Okay, get away. <laughs> how long have you been doing stand up? Three years. Look at you. Switch to the other Nathan. Get the fuck out. You're wearing fucking sweatpants right now. <laughs> what the fuck do you have in those pockets, dude? You're wearing a uh, work boot. <laughs> it's a weird look. Snow White? He looks like he surfs, and he looks like a surf ninja. <laughs> surf ninja reference uh, for those surf ninja fans out there. Uh, so, uh, Nathan, you've been doing it, what'd you say, a few months? Seven uh, months? Seven months. In San Diego. Seven months. Where are you from? San Diego. Well, I'm from North Carolina. Do it in San Diego. Why do you think you don't have confidence? Dude, I'm just insanely nervous up there. Jeez. Why? I'm normally not, but. Okay. Your turn. Nathan, too. <laughs> Stop. Why do you think you were so confident? <laughs> I would say I'm very confident. This guy tried to steal this guy's identity in front of his face. <laughs> How can he not be a confident guy? You know I know it's not the right last name, but this guy can't pass possibly Nathan Bryant. This motherfucker is Shanghai Bar Mitzvah sometimes on Saturdays, and it takes all the money the kid gets. You Filipino all the way? Is that what I'm talking about? Half, what's the other half? White. Oh! <laughs> what do you do for a living? I just graduated, and I'm, I'm actually just working part-time, living at home. I'm yeah, what's the part-time job? Oh, uh, I just work at a church. What do you do at a church? Shut up, shit. <laughs> I mean, uh, that sounds very shady. Like, you know, like, they're so vivid. Like, uh, yeah, like, like kids get molested or what? Yeah. Are you I set the tarps up so the priest's jizz doesn't get all over the walls. <laughs> Wipe his faces off, send them home. I set up shit. I work in a church. That's just the guy they need around the church. Is the, the shit setter up right. Nathan Driver, uh, you step up there. The guy that actually looks like he works like in the a church. We're like the Ray Donovan of churches over here. All right. You fix shit. Nathan Driver, what do you do for work? Uh, I work, I'm a bioengineer. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. What the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> hey, my friends will come. Just leave, leave comedy behind. <laughs> How long have you been doing that for? Uh, like two years. That's why I moved for the same What? You're a fan of only two years. I've been going for four at least. Uh, so, wow, so you don't live with your parents. No, my mom's here, though. Oh, wow, this guy just can't go wrong. Wow. Mini driver, everybody, mini driver. You raised a great Nathan, ma'am. It could have turned out like this. Yeah, long term. So who you could have got? Good thing you didn't fuck a Filipino man. Who came inside of you, that's what he meant. Yes, yes, sorry. What scares you? Uh, I'm Be having this guy steal his identity? <laughs> I can't do that. Um, no, I'm allergic to peanuts. So I have to put it out. Like, like the, uh, the Charlie Brown cartoon? <laughs> I hope you're not allergic to that good, good pussy. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna switch to Nathan 
two real quick. Nathan, two, uh, what scares you? What are you afraid of? Wait, quick side question. Is your mother here? <laughs> no, she's okay. not here. Probably, yeah, I'd be afraid of uh, bed. What's she doing now? Mom. Making your race car bed so when you get home? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you said? You're afraid of your mom? No, I said I, oh. I would be afraid of bombing in front of my mom. You'd be afraid of bombing in front of your yeah, mom? Which I have. Wow, you've done that before? Yeah. Where Your mom went and saw you? Where was that show at? Uh, I did, I did a, a black room for the very first time in New York. <laughs> oh, that's totally the show to invite your mom to. <laughs> hey, mom, I'm doing a black room for the first time. You're going to love the, the show and the audience. <laughs> we know how Filipinos and blacks get along. Bling, 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 bling. Not much. Hey, mom, want to see me get dragged off the Apollo stage? This is a good night to be proud of me. I almost feel bad. You look really pissed off. Like something's a really bad side it's, uh... By the way, at your job tomorrow, if you see this motherfucker in the parking lot, run. Yeah, kill him. Get the fuck out. Bioengineer a weapon and stab him in the face. I don't know if I used that correctly, but I'm not a bioengineer. So. Name the two. Is everything okay? <laughs> Having a bad hair day. Well. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, uh, there's only one Nathan can win. Uh, Nathan two. I think we're gonna go with this Nathan like one shit. over here. No, I this is the first time Nathan off. Nathan one. Uh, step up to the mic if there's anything. If there's anyone you'd like to thank or anything like this. <laughs> Your mother. My mom, obviously. Yeah. Nathan too, you can go back to your seat. There he goes. Nathan too, making sure Twitter? he doesn't break my neck. What's your Twitter, Nathan? No, he probably doesn't want to plug it. That's a good point. Uh, just hashtag bomb uh, on Twitter. He gets the home version of Kill Tony. No way. Nathan, have you seen uh, my friend Cinderella's shoe anyway? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> fucking disgusting. Chrome Chris's giant web defeat have made an appearance on the show. Well, uh, are you just visiting LA or you live here now? Uh, no, I'm just visiting. How long are you visiting for? Uh, just like a couple days. Well, look at that. You've been doing it a few months. You're in town a couple days. You got on the main stage yeah, of the comedy fun. store in front of your fucking uh, mother, and you won the first ever Nathan off. There he goes, everybody. Nathan Trigger. He's on Twitter. No, he's on Instagram. Nathan.Trigger is only on Instagram. That was brutal. All right. <laughs> Nathan, too, really did have that look in his face like he's going to be a shooter soon. Sometimes. <laughs> Somebody with your name and lose. It happens to the best of us. It's a lesson. Jeff Foxworthy has been beating me for years. <laughs> All right, well, let's see what happens here. This guy has two first names, so it might get really wacky. Put your hands together for Scott Anthony. Here it comes. Scott Anthony. There's only one. Going through some changes recently, just turned 30 years old, all right? And, uh, woo! For 30 right here, yes. Um, and also just sold my car I've had for like 10 years, and it was kind of sad because it reminded me of how I just recently joined this dating app. Because when you're, when you're 30 years old and you're on a dating app, it's kind of like selling a used car. There's a lot of wear and tear, there's some mileage, a lot of it's emotional and mental. <laughs> um, but uh, it's funny though, because I'm on that app, it's kind of hard when you're skinny. Like, I look like I did like a half ass job of uh, finishing puberty altogether. <laughs> um, and you know, it's interesting. Nobody has sympathy for that though, for being skinny, all right? It's like being a redhead person com complaining about uh, people's use of the word ginger. Like, nobody gives a shit. It's not that kind of a hard R slur. <laughs> um, also, when I'm on that app, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not picky. Not picky, okay? Which is a nice way of, of saying I'm lonely. <laughs> uh, that was quick. Oh, shit. So, well, there you go, Scott Anthony. Yeah. Scott, this is your first time on the show, right? First time, first time. Hell yeah. That was, a, that was an interesting set. I think I saw Snow White dozing off a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, how's it going, man? How long have you been on stand up? Doing awesome. That was actually my third time. Third time oh, ever. Yeah. Wow. You're 30 years old. Why did you want to start doing stand up? You know, I, I, uh, I, it was always.
always one of those things I love. I love stand-up. I love going to comedy shows. And uh, there's just been some different nights where I was just, you know, I'm having some fun with the friends. Everyone's kind of laughing. I was like, oh, what the hell? You know, I'm just going to throw my name in the hat. I, I've been a huge fan of yours, a uh, huge fan of the podcast. Thank uh, you. Watch it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone ever told you that you look like a grown-up version of the boss baby? <laughs> I was going to say, it looks like they stretched out Wee Man. <laughs> Oh shit. oh shit. Getting warmed up in round two back there. Uh oh. You seem very comfortable on stage, dude. Were you in like plays or? No, I just, I watched just so the, much fucking comedy over the years. You were the backup point guard of your grade school basketball team. Am I correct? I was, I am, am I actually right about that? I actually was. I could only hit threes. I was like, no word. Backup point guard. I called the position and his order in the fucking lineup. You look like every backup point guard. I do. You really do. Except for the black ones. Because they have talent and don't look like him. Basketball talent. Who are some of your comedic influences? Oh man, besides this guy sitting right here, Thank um, you. huge fan. <laughs> oh man, uh, you know, Chris Alia, Joe Rogan, uh, Anthony Jeselnik, um, you know, all those, uh, Bill Burr is my favorite of all time. Love Bill Burr. Red Band, I'm sure you're right around the corner. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> he was getting there. He, he, he was two away from me. You. <laughs> So Scott, that's cool. What do you do for a living? I am a dog trainer, professional dog trainer. A dog wow. trainer? Wow. I talk to birds. <laughs> you guys have a lot in common. Yeah. How long have you been uh, training dogs for? I have been training dogs for, uh, going on, this August will be uh, three years. Oh, wow. Congratulations. What's the uh, weirdest trick that somebody's asked you to train their dog to do? I want him to suck my dick when he hears the doorknob open. <laughs> I want him to get his head around the corner. I want him to give me the paper and then 69 me. <laughs> but he's your own personal uh, dog trainer, your own dog. Exactly. See, the things that you can get them to do when no one's looking, it's incredible. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I would say with a lot of confidence. <laughs> Is this a job that you think you're going to stay at for a while? Hey, I'm having fun with it right now, so I'm going to keep with it. So you're going to stay? <laughs> stay? <laughs> What, is there a, uh, a high uh, a high rollover rate in that business? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, did you know this going in? You wrote, no. We wrote jokes? <laughs> oh, yeah. Is this gonna... ever a dog trainer? <laughs> Are you going to take it or leash it? <laughs> that was that was pre written. Yeah. Sorry, guys. You have a lot of uh, rough days. <laughs> oh, just, shit. I just said that was rough. Oh, we missed this. Sorry. How much uh, tail do you get being a dog trainer? Oh, shit. Yeah, you know, being a dog I actually had a girl one time ask me if she I could, could fuck your dog. <laughs> <laughs> what did the girl say to you? She actually asked me. Uh, if, she, if you wanted to go for a walk? <laughs> yes, yes. If I can put the leash on her, go for a walk. She's like, hey, can you try this on me real quick? See if this collar will fit. Is that true? It is very true. I've been there. I've you put done a, that. You put a dog collar on a girl? Made her. She wanted to drink out of a, a dog bowl of water, too. <laughs> wow. Was this an actual dog or a person? <laughs> it looked, I don't know. Looking <laughs> back, I'm not sure now. <laughs> Was she a com comedian or a regular citizen? <laughs> Stop it, Brian. <laughs> She's a regular person. Do you still have your phone number and your phone? Red Man likes, would like to know. <laughs> Does she want to do the Ice House this Friday? <laughs> <laughs> From the Dog House to the Ice House. <laughs> Red Man's got an old leash that's not going to use itself. <laughs> wow. So did you put the collar on her? You know, it, it of course, of course. It's the least you can do. All right, come on, guys. We've gone too far down this uh, rabbit hole, which is also what dogs love to do. Anyway, all right. Did you put the lampshade thing on her? So she didn't, like, try to lick her own face? <laughs> I don't think she could. She was so big, I don't think she could do that with or without the lampshade. Tall or fat? Fat. 
Oh, oh, that's why the dog collar would fit on it? Nothing would fit on it, no. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon, man. Too soon. I'm going to be honest with you, Scott. I have a four-month-old puppy right now running around my house. And uh, one of the uh, cool things that I did a couple weeks ago is I watched the Netflix version of The Dog Whisperer. It's called Caesar 911. And I was amazed by the six episodes that I saw. It, 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 I learned a lot, not just about dogs, but about human behavior and whatnot. And then I was bragging about it here or somewhere else and about how amazed I was. And they told me that all those dogs on that show are professional actor dogs. And that I got fooled. Whoa. Is there any truth to this? Do you know about this? I know nothing about that. I mean, you it's know, not true. My, my dogs that I train might look like that, but they are not paid. They're not paid off. Right? And you know it's not true. Are you afraid of Caesar Milan? Why? He, Why won't you answer the question? He's a terrifying man. Yeah, Let me ask you this. Let me put it to you this way. What's like the meanest thing? Because I mean, there has to be something crazy that you guys do, you dog trainers, to take a fucking wild, crazy fucking puppy and turn it into some militant thing. So what's like the meanest thing you've ever done to a dog? Really? I mean, it, well, I wouldn't say mean, but uh, if you've ever had like a little uh, CBD treat, uh, it, it works great fuck? for dogs. You can actually give CBD treats to dogs. Do you ever wear a Michael Vick jersey just to let him know you mean business? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it's, that's, that's actually what I was for Halloween. You know, I had the Michael Vick jersey and I actually had a dog trainer on the back of it. So is CBD really a way to like calm a dog down? Mm -hmm. uh, dude, it calms me down. All right. Yeah, that's this guy's the worst dog trainer I've ever seen yeah. in my life. It's like, if they go to the Lancy, put some cocaine on the inside of their asshole, rub it around. I swear to God. It sounds like you're making puppy soldiers. You live here in LA? Actually, from San Diego. Whoa. San Diego. You drive can drive home with Mrs. Driver. Did you go to high school with uh, Nathan? You know, uh, no, I, do, I don't want to go to any school with Nathan. If you're talking about Nathan, too, I don't want to go to school with Nathan. No, no. Nathan, the good Nathan. Uh, Nathan yeah, you look like kind of like Dean Ambrose. Yeah, I would, um, I would definitely um, I'd go to school with him. I'd probably cheat off his test. You should have closed on the I don't want to go to school with Nathan Driver, too, or Nathan, too. You should have gone off on that one. Anyway, Scott, here you are. You made the drive all the way up from San Diego for this. You got pulled out of the bucket. The odds of that are incredible. I actually called my shot, too, my best friend there. I called and said, hey, it's coming up next. Wow. Well, look at that. Who said you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Uh, there you go. Scott Anthony, everybody. Sit, Scott. Sit. <laughs> Stay. Yeah. All right. I pulled another name out of the bucket. Put your hands together for DJ Sandu. DJ Sandu. Is there any penalty for that? Like, Black if he gets caved, if he comes back next week? They get blacklisted. blacklisted uh, unless they sign up again. There's no way anybody actually keeps track. <laughs> it's impossible to keep track of it. We'd have to have somebody specifically just watching how the thing was going. Put your hands together for Lizzie Weissman. <laughs> Jewish, and I'm in my 30s, and I'm single. Don't worry, my mom's fine. She's cool. She's uh, trying to set me up with people. She's like, Lizzie, I set you up with this guy. He works for Disney. You're, he's a big head of the company. Everybody loves him. Everybody knows him. Go out with him. You guys, he was Mickey Mouse at Disneyland. I mean, it was a cool date until I had his dick in my mouth, and he shouted, Oh, wait, I'll swallow! Bitch, I'll bring your work home with you, okay? No, seriously, Goofy's in the corner like, hook you up, hook you up. You guys, I don't know, people are like, go oh, out, you know, go to these adult summer camps, you know, that's a way to meet somebody. I was like, ah, Jews in camps. Have a great relationship, so. I don't know, there's just too many apps. Tinder, Bumble, come fuck me. I mean, you know. We've been on all, we all been on that. But uh, everyone's talking about curvy bodies. Curvy bodies are in, I'm sick of it. But listen, don't be the motherfucker who says, I like a girl with a curvy body, and then talk to the skinniest bitch in the whole room. What kind of curves do you like? So 
Telemundo's weather on the program. How did you know? Don't do that, exactly. Love it. Hell yeah. This is great. How long have you been with stand up? Like four years. Four years? Yeah. Like all continuously? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. A little stand up, a little. I was a preschool teacher too. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Holla. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. How long did you teach preschool for? Seven years. Is that what you do for a living? I actually work in higher education now. Higher education? What does that even mean? College? Yeah. Oh, yeah, like yeah, college. college. But, I, college but I, most people would just say, I work at a college now. Why'd you say higher education? When you're going from preschool, you got... Yeah. Uh, it's a big jump. Preschool to college? I know, right? I was like, fuck high school. This shit's bullshit. It's a lot better for the romances with the students. Yeah. Oh, fucking, yeah. I was like that hot teacher, you know. Have like, you ever thought about having sex with one of your students? When you were a pre preschooler? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Preschooler. You're like, that kid finger paints well. I bet he could do some good things. Yeah. For I potty train kids. I see what's up. Jeez. Oh, 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 shit. Like, in seven years, I'll have that in my mouth. Exactly. Lower down the show. To direct Guardians into the galaxy. <laughs> Let's get the camera in the bathroom. A little James Gunn humor over there. From, uh, Red Band. All right, yeah. Izzy. So you've been doing it a few years, yeah. and you've done improv as well. Yeah. Where'd you study improv at? Second City. Ah. Yeah. Did that. It was fun. It was good. Good stuff. You know. Do you like improv better or stand up? Stand up. What do you do uh, at the college that you teach at? What do you specialize in? Uh, I recruit students to go to the school, so... <laughs> what, do you just drive around in a van and I'm you're like, like hey, come here, come look at the you want to see more of these? I'm the person behind the table with all the pamphlets, and I'm a, you know, schmoozer, so... What's the school? I don't think I should say. <laughs> I think you should. Who thinks she should? Uh, there may be a student who never wants to go. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, anybody know who the Jayhawks are? Kansas? Yes. Do you live in L.A., though? Yeah. You're the L.A. recruiter for Kansas? Yeah, I do all the West Coast. I believe uh, we have an alumni sitting right over there, Miss Snow White. Who is KU? No, Johnson County Community College. <laughs> is that in Kansas? Yeah, yeah, yeah same thing. Yeah, you yeah, fucking, yeah. you made it. Okay. Yeah, what was, what was your team's uh, mascot? They were the Jayhawks, you were the... The Pigeons. They were the Cavaliers. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't even afford a good mascot. <laughs> The first time I saw a Confederate flag was in Kansas. I was like, oh, our old okay. mascot used to just be a dirty rat. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Lizzie, yeah. uh, it, it, you've been single a while? Is that an assumption? <laughs> I'm just curious. Uh, no, uh, you have... like, like eight months now. Yeah, you've been uh, you on uh, the Jewish uh, dating sites or normal dating sites? I, I, uh, I was on J-Swipe for a minute. Yeah. Uh, it's a terrible name. It is. I said it feels very Holocausty to me, you know. What's the bagel? Oh, bagel? Oh, wow. uh, Coffee uh, the bagel? Coffee I'm a Jew. Bagel. Oh, that's Jewish. Coffee means bagel. But I heard it's a lot of like Jewish guys and then Asian women. Like that's the uh Ooh, that's, that's, that's bagel the... meets egg foo young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the that's the match. Is your goal to stay in that uh, gene pool? Or are you looking to expand? I don't want taste sacks for my children, no. You like don't, I don't want what? Taste sacks? They're Jew diseases that we the get. Jew disease, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, so yeah. you guys we're really, the chosen ones. You guys really <laughs> diseases and other. No, I mean I've, I've actually never dated a Jew, so. Me neither. I never will. <laughs> <laughs> Jews are crazy. Yeah, yeah. Jews are crazy. Yeah. 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 And so we'll both see me speaking. Snow yeah. White. Don't let Snow, him do that, do you? Snow White power. <laughs> <laughs> it's your Halloween costume. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, so, uh, Lizzie, what yeah. else about you? Uh, you have a big family. You guys from LA? I am from LA. My mom's from England. My dad, I have like uh, baby boomer parents. My dad's actually 83 years old mm -hmm. and he like produces black gospel music. So that's kind of what? interesting. <laughs> Ew, gross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
How old is your mom? Uh, how old is mom? She's uh, 72. Yeah. How old they had you when they were like 68? <laughs> my dad was 50 when he had me, yeah. Well, how long has your dad been producing uh, black gospel music for? As long as I've been alive. I don't know, a long ass time. I mean, he's wow. his hobby, it's what it's he does. It's just so it. strange to me, a Jewish guy helping other people, musicians, <laughs> produce their own thing. Yeah. Like, uh, right. to and then you take the money, you don't believe in the gospel side of it, yeah, what's yeah, wrong with that? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. How long has your dad been producing children? Are you like the oldest or? Uh, no, it's just uh, me and my sister. So okay, we're so at 50, five. he's like, all right, it's time to. Yeah, he's like, I've been trying for a long kids. time. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. clever how you use the word produce there. That's right. Yeah. 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 Or they hated it. Cool. All right, Lizzie. Well, uh, was, that, was that good for you? Was that not? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, good Lord. Someone now we're looking into all the life where it may be going wrong. Someone needs to get laid. What's next? Are you going to light a cigarette over there? You know who would be perfect for it? Nathan, too. Oh. Ah, yeah, for sure. Oh, Get in on some of that. <laughs> take take all that energy, please. Yeah. Take a slice of that Filipinas. <laughs> It'll be an easy transition. He's used to living with his mom, so. <laughs> all right. Lizzie, you were great. This is fun. There you Thank go. You. Lizzie Weissman, Thanks everybody. There she goes. Right. She's on Twitter. Shows. I seem to climb over like 15 people to get to stage. Yeah, it was like, incredible. Your, your mind must be moving fast. Unbelievable athleticism. <laughs> or a red band's cane, if anyone needs that. <laughs> red band does have a uh, full-blown cane for you podcast <laughs> listeners, by the way. Did you have to buy that, or did you just have that like in storage? No, it was a CBS, and they only had sparkly blue or sparkly pink. They don't have like anything in between. That's because wow. only women go to CVS for games. <laughs> Where do you go? Oh, the red king. <laughs> Sports shit. Put your hands together for Jerome Tennyson, everyone. Here we go. Jerome Summertime for me, I'm a high school math teacher, so I'm enjoying the summer. I love my job, but I, I needed a little bit of a break. You know what I mean? Because I had this one student kind of scared me. He had these tattooed teardrops under his eye. And you know, that usually made you kill somebody, right? So I remember one time the students came into class and I was like, all right, y'all, pop quiz. He was like, what, cuz? I was like, not today. <laughs> I'm enjoying the summer, but like now, like I have so much free time, I'm like, I'm addicted to the strip clubs. <laughs> and like they got this thing where they like make it rain, right? So this football player, he came in with like this trash bag full of money. And I knew he was a football player because he had this t-shirt on that said, I play for the Rams. Like he wanted everybody to know. And he reached into his bag, and I don't know how much money he threw up in the air. All I know is I made $300. <laughs> I was down there with the stripper. This is for anybody. <laughs> All right, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Can we guess how long he's been doing comedy? Go ahead. 18 years. <laughs> three years. I was just going to say three. Three. That's the motherfucker. And you said that uh, you're also a teacher, huh? Yeah. And uh, how old are the kids that you're teaching? How old? Yeah. Uh, most of them are seniors, so like 17, about to be 18. Oh, okay. But I have a freshman. I had a freshman class, too. I thought seniors were like in their 50s. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Goldberg back there. How old are you? You look young. 33. Okay. Oh, you look young. I, oh, thank you. What's going on with the sweatpants today? I, I know. know. Is. is that the new style? Yeah, all the comments we agreed. We was like, you know, sweatpants. All right. This house party four, comedy jammy jam? <laughs> uh, fuck yeah. Jerome, how long have you been teaching high school students? This was my first uh, full school year. Oh, high school school. okay. Hell yeah. How was it? I loved it, man. This is this, this easy job to me. It is. It's like it's, you know, it's, so you don't think you should be paid more? Oh, I do think we should be paid more. But it's too easy. But it, yeah, it's too easy. Like some people like get carried away though. Some people are like, oh, you guys should make. They do lesson plans like, and, stuff. and stuff. Fucking idiots. Yeah, but I mean, that's, <laughs> they like want to teach people. And you're like, what are these assholes doing? Is it just easy for you because they're not really planning or teaching that well, or is it just like? No, I mean, 
like, I, I plan and stuff, but I mean, I just. But you like, like to improvise like that, so. when you get up there. I improvise. What do you teach? I was teaching AP Calc and then what they have called integrated math too. Was that like, like where the whites and blacks do it together? together? Huh? That's where the whites and the blacks do the algebra together? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's class. That's yep. the only kind of algebra I support, my friends. <laughs> integrated. Fuck segregated algebra. It's true. It's over. So they, oh, so you're, you're like a math whiz. You're like the Jizza. Because he's black? How dare you? Jizza's like went you. to MIT for math. It was a comedy. The guy with the Wu Tang shirt, the dog trainer, looked that up. That fact. <laughs> yes. Jerome. Yeah. Uh, so have you only been doing stand up exclusively in LA? Yeah, exclusively in LA. Although I, I've had a few gigs like out of state recently, but this is where you're born and raised. This is where I'm born and raised. What's your family like? What what part of town did you grow up in? I grew up. I grew up a little bit in LA in Gardena, mm -hmm. and then I spent the rest like I went to high school in the suburbs. Uh, okay. Be honest. Do you ever work out a bit on your class? All the time. <laughs> Especially if I can't make it to an open mic like that day. Oh yeah, I do. All That's time. why your job is easy. You're like, let me grab this microphone, guys. <laughs> and I've bombed in front of them a few times, and usually when I bomb, that's when the pop quizzes are. What? Did you just stand up? <laughs> oh, that's not funny. <laughs> you stand on a milk crate or anything where you give the presentation? Or you like, hey guys, what's the deal with three? No, I just go right into it. I just like treat it like it's so somebody will come in and we'll be talking, and then I'll just go into my material. So the other day, before we get to the I was fucking this woman last week. You ever have that smelly pussy? <laughs> you know, like your mom had. You know what I'm talking about, now, Eugene. You, you guys aren't old enough to go to strip clubs yet, but they do this thing called making it, it rain there. Uh, <laughs> and Felicia, you know, I, I did, I did do that that joke, the strip club joke yeah. in front of because they were seniors. It was like they were on their way out. Yeah, they know. They're they already yeah. yeah. And they know about making it rain. So, Mr. Right. Jerome, you're not a good T-shirt. Tax oh. dollars hard at work hard over work. here. <laughs> Now, if you're any indication, I'd say more than three quarters. God. <laughs> have you ever done? I'm good at my job, though. I don't, I'm really good at it. Have you ever had other teachers come out and watch you do stand up at shows? Uh, no, but I've had like some of the district employees come and see me. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Is it the superintendent? Like the lunch lady? <laughs> <laughs> Not the lunch lady, like the secretary of the, of the district. And there's this one, she's like the, uh, I, forget what, I forget what her thing is, not the, uh, Secretary of the That's like a financial, she's like in charge of like the, okay. is Secretary it, of the is Treasury. It, is it true that you love going to strip clubs? I do. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're, so you're single right now too? No, I'm in a relationship. Oh, oh, like yeah. Yeah. If Jerome walks into a strip club with $458, yeah. and he gives Tanya $171, and Bubbles, uh, is your lady here? No. Okay. Does she know you like strip clubs? Yeah. She okay. just lets you go? Yeah, she's gone with me a few times. What does she do? She, she worked there? She's a, <laughs> she's a stripper. Oh, she's a nurse. A nurse? Oh, that's her stripper character? Yeah. <laughs> wow, damn. You ever, uh, you ever hook up with her in like the nurse's uniform? You ever do the thing where like, all right, babe, pretend like I'm waking up from a coma or something like that? Not, 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 she wasn't wearing the nurse's uniform, but we had role play like that though. You were saying, pretend I can't move my dick. Uh, trying to get it. <laughs> see, what, back see it. what you can do. <laughs> you said that you have role played. Uh, what if, uh, what's uh, one of the more interesting roles that you've played been? Can you give us a little example? Of um, I played, I played a professor. She was a student. Cause I Whoa. Like, He's like, let's see what your real first and last name from my class. Snow White. Use your character. Do you your book picture. Do you want to be my Bill Cosby? <laughs> <laughs> wow, professor and student. Any other wild ones? Um, that's pretty much like it. Yeah. Yeah, that's all you're willing to give us. You big Star Wars fan, judging by the shirt? I am. Yeah, I am. Although I, did, I haven't seen the last one, though. I know that's bad. I'm You're a not big, that big, big fan, fan, but I just had to see the last one. I like this guy. Yeah. He's smart, he's got his shit together, he's funny. Loves yeah. strippers. Yeah, you got a good look. Hates hey, education. What's not yeah. to love about Jerome? <laughs> Jerome, we love you. Uh, the only reason you're getting a 96% tonight is because of the sweatpants. So, uh, <laughs> there you go. It's Jerome Tennyson, everybody. Let's keep moving along. He's on Twitter at Is That Oklahoma? You guys get the show, right? You guys having fun out there? Hi. Let's keep moving along. Um, yeah. Let's see what happens next. 
Oh, Snow White. This looks like definitely a new name. Put your hands together for Noah Shark Robertson. Shark Robertson, and I'm normally a musician. <clears throat> I'm from Texas, the friendly state. Yeah, they're just confused about that title as you guys are, trust me. We don't take too kindly to your cat around these kinds of parts. Real fucking friendly. I realized quickly I had to get the hell out of there. I packed up my drums and my clothes in my car and I moved to Hollywood. And it actually ended up working out pretty nice for me. I ended up signing record deals. I got on the billboard charts, toured the fucking world, and uh, now I'm taking a short break from music. I'm uh, driving for Uber, <laughs> and that's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, another cool thing I've been doing lately is um, living in my car. And uh, it doesn't really help with the ladies, you know? Like, I'm at a bar, and the chick's like, what do you do? And I'm just like, I work from home. <laughs> All right, that's it. Shark Robertson, nailing it in 58 seconds, living in his car, changing his life, no longer a musician. I have a lot of questions. Yeah, <laughs> let's fucking get it started. I love it. Snow White, you want to jump in first? Yeah, how many times? Um, come, come back to me later. <laughs> <laughs> Noah Shark Robertson, where do we even begin? How about with a little bit of something from Snow White? I got excited. <laughs> how many times have you tried to hang yourself with a chain wallet? <laughs> Yeah. Did you forget your jokes and just decide to read your resume instead? Because literally we know everything about you. Are you really a like, world-renowned musician? I wouldn't say world-renowned, but I have traveled the world and I've signed record deals and I've done all that Damn, stuff. Damn, look at you. You're like I, the king of weird. And I, I didn't quit music. I just, I've always wanted to do comedy. So music I'm quit you. To comedy. Do you keep the gold records in the Uber, like in the windows? Yeah. So like, they're like, oh, this guy, check me out. Hey, uh, you know you're supposed to play with your drumsticks, not eat them, right? <laughs> oh. Now, what's exciting about this one, if you can't tell, what's exciting about this one, if you can't tell, is it appears to me by all, uh, what the fuck, where'd his name go? Son of a bitch. Shark. Did you take it? Noah Shark Robertson. Here it, it appears that this might be the first guy that can actually beat Joelberg. So, I don't know how much more naked Joelberg can get back there, but hopefully he works a miracle here tonight. Oh, Jesus. Super showcase. Bang the shit out of it. Show us something crazy. Maybe 20 seconds if you're feeling that. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. Noah Sharp Robertson. It's a
isn't judging this one tonight. If uh, Joel beats him, is Joel now world renowned? And he's the shark. He takes the name. Mexican drum off champion. Uh, I don't know. You know, it's, it was close to me, but I think I might. What, what do you guys think? We give it to Joel Berg on this one. We give it to Noah Sharp Robertson. I was told by a lawyer that the sock has to stay up. Okay, <laughs> they serve food here. Always agree with the Does that mean you can serve my eating? <laughs> well, just in an establishment that serves food, you gotta keep the sock on at least. I'm pretty sure you have to keep your shoes and socks on too. Wait, sure. is Jerome still here? Is that true? He's a guy who's seen a lot of nudity. In the There's nothing more rock and roll than explaining legality before you enter a competition. Here he is with his rebuttal. It's Joel Burr. since I was like 15. I'm 34 now. Oh, okay. You play with anybody we would recognize? Uh, I was in a shitty band called Moto Grader. Love them. It's the lead singer from Five Finger Death Punch. Love them too. Of course. Uh, Who has heard that? I was in a band called The Browning. Love them. Oh. <laughs> you you, you hooked up with a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, dirty, like, roadie chicks back in the day? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, wow. I was playing The Browning. Oh, this is actual Moto Grader. Turn that shit up. Oh, yeah, it's, that's it's about right. to start right now. Thank you. Sounds more like Joelberg on drums to me. I made you want to commit a hate crime. Do you like it? I gotta be honest. Uh, I'm a metal drummer. He has a single pedal back there. Oh, no. Oh. Don't make about this is I studied music, I studied drums in college, I'm a drum teacher, so. How's oh, the resume oh, drop? Well, wow, I'm a high school dropout, how's it feel? <laughs> it <laughs> I found a record label, he should send me a demo. Whoa. Dude, I'm glad you're not funny either, dude. <laughs> <laughs> send you a demo, he just beat you in a Mexican drum off, how dare you? What's with the shark gimmick? Yeah, why is there a shark uh, in the middle of your name? And uh, all over his arms. Oh, wow. Is it only because it's Shark Week now? He's uh, a walking billboard for that channel. Actually, I'm on a mission to try to do stand-up comedy every night of Shark Week. And I have all this shark shit. It's the shittiest goal I've ever heard. So, really good. Yeah. 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 I thought it was self-explanatory. Sharks are fucking badass. Like, I can understand if my name was Noah Duckbill Platypus Robertson. Like, he had that prepared. Uh, you you son of a bitch. We could smell that out like a shark. <laughs> Have you ever swam with sharks? No, but I, I want to see a great white shark before I die. I just don't want to see a great white shark right before I die. You know, just another bit. More prepared to wow. Another bit. I I'm sure that you were going to do a great white concert show, guys. You guys? Yes, uh, no, yes. let's hear something. Oh, the, the, the silent but deadly, Chroma Chris is about to take a stab at it. Here we go. Let's Elsa. Hear you, just, you just beat me to it. I was going to tell him we should join Great White. I think they're missing some members. If, oh, oh, damn. He'd have to be on fire for that. <laughs> Drums. Yeah. Sorry, I'm a metal drummer. Noah, 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 
Chuck Roberts and you've spent a lot of time with a lot of extreme bands, like what's the craziest shit you've ever been part of, like off stage? You ever been in any crazy orgies or anything like that? Uh, not exactly. But... You got fucked tonight. <laughs> Shark Week all the way until two in the morning, and then we went to bed. No, I, I actually I played a festival in Germany in front of like a hundred thousand people, and uh, the crowd was getting hit by lightning while we were playing. Oh, no, those Nazis like, deserved it. How dare they? <laughs> wait, wait the, the crowd was getting hit by fucking lightning. There was like all these were people dying. No, they were getting carried out in stretchers, and we we're just like, like, keep rocking. The shark doesn't stop. <laughs> yeah, you go. Sure. Talk about death metal. Oh. Nice to meet you. Welcome you. to the show. Thanks for being here. Woo! There you go. No, it's Chuck Roberts. How you? I still can't get over it. He's like, what do comedy? Every night of Shark Week. Yeah. How many of Shark Week? Impossible feat to fucking do. That's is so it good. Shark Week or is it Comedy Week? <laughs> is Shark Week, how long is it? It's a week. week. It's yeah, just a week. Seven days. Yeah. We're doing comedy seven days a week anyway. Even, even I'm like, it could be a month or something. It seems like they would milk that very popular week that they have, but nope, they just uh, keep it in a week. <laughs> Looks like the shark got the snark. <laughs> That's a good one. All right. <laughs> all right, don't give me credit. I haven't heard any saxophone all night. I've been playing all night, you bitch. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my, my apologies. Do you know you're pushing by Song Peppa, the Power Rangers theme, and many more? <laughs> Survivors on is my new goal. <laughs> don't push yourself that hard. It's, I'm like Jerome. I don't want to overextend. I pulled another name out of the bucket. We've seen this young lady before. Put your hands together for Jess Wood, everyone. There we go. It's Jess Wood. You can hear her. Jamaican 29 year old dominatrix with a shaving fetish. So hang on for Steve. Shit! So they click over and I'm like, hello, Steve! You got any shaving cream over there, boy? Well, you better get some, bitch, because I'm feeling mighty stubble. <laughs> and then I hang up and I look over at my aunt and she goes, oh, you're good. Fuck yeah, just good. Welcome back. Thank you. It sounded like a black leprechaun. Yeah. <laughs> like the leprechaun from Leprechaun 4? Yeah. Yeah. Back in the hood? <laughs> exactly. It's a good movie. You should check okay. it out. <laughs> Jennifer Aniston's in it. Is that true? Yeah. No, wow. she's in the first one. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah, the original. Okay. Oh, I stay correct. There you go. 
Um, Jess, how's it going? You've been on the show a couple times before. Every time it's been fun. You're a comedy vet. Uh, and uh, so here we are. That was another fun one. How's life been going? Anything crazy since the last time we saw you? Yes. Um, well, today I fucked a guy that I haven't fucked in a while because he got on meth. Like, he went crazy meth time. And, oh, uh, hell yeah. 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 I, mean, I relate. Yeah, I you know, know that. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Is he off the meth at least? Now? I think he is. I mean, he didn't fuck me for five hours, so I think it's good. Did you lick any of the open wounds? No, no wounds. No, he doesn't look. This is what fucks with me about this guy. He doesn't look like a meth head yet. Like he still looks really handsome and hot, but he's homeless and. Uh... Wow! <laughs> Damn! Look at that homeless dude. Did you get fucked by a homeless meth head today? Yeah. Damn, I, I love the honesty. She's wearing a bathing suit as underwear it's right now. It's a cloth, but no, I have underpants on. Damn, thanks, that's Brian. incredible. Hi, Brian. Fucking meth head. By the way, every other comic just, like, she set the bar very low. Did you meet him on a dating app? How do you meet a homeless no, guy? I met him in the laundromat. He wasn't homeless when we met. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, that's yeah. a classic romantic first line of a dating story. Yeah, he wasn't homeless when we met. No, he was in the laundromat. He was 22. Too young, I know you guys, I know. Uh, but he was really hot. He's like, here, get in this grocery cart. I want to push you around town for a while. So he lived with his mom when I met him. With his mom. Damn. Wow. <laughs> a meth head fucking a cougar. That's hot. That's yeah. like breaking back. He, uh, yeah. He, he's really good. And he knocked on the door this morning. He's like, do you have any meth? Oh, wrong house. Sorry. Do <laughs> you have any toilet paper? He just took a shit on the sidewalk. <laughs> There's that Jennifer Aniston reference from three minutes ago. <laughs> Got it loaded up. The pain even affects your computer. <laughs> Are you pushing the buttons with your cane? <laughs> wow. How was he, uh, how was it today? It's really good. It was really good. I think he's cleaned up, like, today. Like, took a shower? You mean the drugs? Well, he came in to take a shower. I, I made him take a shower. That's nice. Yeah. Well, yeah, he wanted to buy a cigarette, and I wouldn't let him buy a cigarette. He goes, I'll give you a Wait, buy a cigarette from yeah, you? from me. Yeah, he Is your house, like, a prison? Fucking well, yeah. setup? <laughs> Like, you want to trade cigarettes and walk around the, the sandy area? Well, he wanted to give me a dollar, and I said, I don't want a dollar. You don't have to give me a dollar for a cigarette. And he goes, how about this dick? Oh, like, oh, shit. No way. Where do you live, that cigarette hut on Fountain and uh, Vine? <laughs> wow. So it's been a while since you had sex with this guy. Uh... Not as long as it should have been. Do you think it's <laughs> How do you get in touch with him? Do you put up a fucking bat signal of a grocery cart above your house? Uh, he just appears once in a while. Wow. Do you go condom or no condom? Oh, condom, condom, for sure. Oh, why bother? <laughs> because I'm not a meth head on the street. You could be if he comes inside. No. Yeah. Thank you, Cassandra. No. I'm a lady. <laughs> did he, did he have to, too late to say that. Way too late. <laughs> did he have to bum a condom from you? Yes, I have a thing of condoms. Okay. I don't you mind. Have a thing I don't mind. Bring his own. I don't know. Did, do you feed him? Is this like a soup kitchen too? I, uh, he brought food today. Oh really? What did he bring? He's like, I was dumpster diving by 7-Eleven. Yeah, I got some hot dogs. A sandwich morning. is only half eaten. Yeah. <laughs> Score for us. He's probably had everything except for the spoons, right? He works at the 99 cent store uh, across the street, so he gets like snacks. He's a, you know, snacks for us. <laughs> Somebody just gave an, oh, that's so sweet. I know, because it fucking happens. There's a guy making effort, you fuckers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. If it's homeless meth head whose lines are, you want this dick? Can be romantic? Does so it can you. you that he's in the crystals? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I've shined enough tonight. <laughs> Joel, were you that meth head? Uh, no comment. <laughs> Damn. Oh, so Jess, yeah. having sex with meth heads. Wow. Yeah. Is, is there something that you've noticed that meth heads do differently in the bedroom than uh, than uh, other people? They a little more. Yeah, they smoke meth while they're fucking here. And they shit themselves. No, no, nothing like that. Very long. They last a very long time. Wow. Uh, yeah, dick stays hard. Dick stays hard. My question for you is, why not just talk about that? Come, come up here and like, I fucked him up. It's very new. Like this one, you know, just talk about what I. Well, the yeah. phone sex is true. That's a true story. I did phone sex. My aunt was there. She did say you're good. She actually said I got a little wet after that. Oh. Whoa. Yeah. The family that I come from. With you. She would also have fucked this guy. That's how hot he is. <laughs> My aunt would have totally fucked him. Do you have a him. picture of this guy? I Maybe do. I'll fuck him. Okay, all right. It's very hot. It's very hot. What was that?
that Joelberg? I just said, all right, it's me, I'll admit it. <laughs> Yeah, so that was today. Whew. Damn, wow. <laughs> All in a day's work yeah. for you. Coming up, crushing, and uh, fucking a meth head. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's everybody's bucket list. Snow White, what do you think? Just another Monday in the White Castle Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> when do you think you'll see him again? Uh, if he's around again, he'll knock. <laughs> uh, Saddest it's, romance. It's, it's really sad. You're like, is that a knock? Oh, no, no, it's not. Uh, Oh, he must be close. Yeah. I don't know what meth smells like, but I know what UCP smells like. I know what crack smells like, so it, I could probably get away with it. It smells like the 99 cent store. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow. I, I hope that uh, you guys uh, become an item. Like, is well, that... we were together for like a year. Um, not oh. together, together, but he came over for a year. And uh, I was fucking this other guy called the Pirate. Wow. wow. Was he a legit pirate? Well, he had a bead in his beard and he wore the guy liner. He was from Sudan. Uh, <laughs> was no, he was a, a Mexican Italian with a lot of hair and beard. I feel like your vagina has graffiti inside of it. <laughs> there you go. got stuck on there and you couldn't get it off. No, it's on purpose. It, it makes people happy. Is it, it, what is it? Just like a sticker? It's, a, it's glued on there. It's, a, it's a glued on there. It doesn't there. come off? Did you do that yourself or is that professionally done? The meth head did it. No, I'm just kidding. You bedazzled your teeth? Yeah, he knows how to work with fucking crystal like that. You know what I'm saying? Put it, smoke it right off your tooth. <laughs> you may steal it off her tooth and try to sell it. Yeah, when you're sleeping. He's chipping away at it. Is a monocle on from the 99 cent oh, oh, babe, you were grinding your teeth in your sleep last night. I don't know what happened to the diamond that was uh, on it. I like that you, he sounds like a businessman in your mind, but he's more like, um, I want this dick or what? That sounds like a pirate. Sounds like, no, the pirate's more like, hey, what's up? Wow. They sound like the same people. <laughs> they they sound like the same they, it's not the same guy. They all sound like Joelberg to me. Hey, hey what's up? What's up with these teeth? She's fucking a character actor who's just working shit out with her. I like this guy. <laughs> fuck yeah. Well, it's very year. Yeah, it was fun. I had a good time. Cause you know what? If dudes can fuck a couple chicks, fucking I can fuck a couple dudes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. You know what? We're, we're, not, we're not judging you for it. We're just very curious about it. Hell yeah. Is, uh... Spoken like a true princess. <laughs> <laughs> there she goes, everybody. Jess Wood, everyone. <laughs> Crazy one tonight. Your Nuva ring fell out. Oh, shit. I don't think that was a Nuva ring. That would have been a shower curtain ring. It was on her too, the back one. All right. Who owned that? Jeez. Josh, is that thing? They're friends with her. Josh, is that thing here yet? All right. Doesn't seem like it. How do you follow that? Let's go back to the bucket. Let's just try. Let's just try to do this. Put your hands together for Mark Sully, everyone. Here we go. Mark Sully. Beans. If I had beans, you being this close to me 
it'll be like the splash zone at SeaWorld, okay? Snow White, you in danger, girl. It sucks because I love a good lagoon. I'm gay, if you couldn't tell. I thought the shark soprano gave that away. And all my girlfriends call me and ask me for advice, like a gay oracle, you know? And they're like, hey, I'm hooking up with this guy and he has like a pound of foreskin on his dick. I don't know what to do. I'm like, really, girl? You never played peekaboo before? You don't mind to step on a push pop, peel a banana? Get back out there and show them what you can do. Wow. Fuck yeah, dude. You have, hell yeah, that was amazing. You did so well, your nips are hard as fuck. That's from the homeless story, I think. I think that yeah. guy sounds hot. Man, you are, uh, you are uh, one of the top comedians today that's probably a bottom. <laughs> yes, you are absolutely right. Fuck yeah. No, no, I'm kidding. I'm you, can, you can really tell that every day he's hustling. <laughs> so it's true, it's sort of like a gay Rick Ross, right? Gay, 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 gay back music. <laughs> That's typically how I do it. I typically go, um, ga 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 Oh, wow. By the way, that was a red band. That sound actually happens when Mark does that. He just has that type of power. That was the fucking thing. An actual beam came out of the top of his hand for you podcast listeners. Are you a dancer? That was, you had some versatility. Yeah, there. I did musical theater growing up, so I've been doing you? ballet. You? Yeah. yeah. I see you more as a, a jock. <laughs> Never. <laughs> That's the best answer I've ever had to any question I've asked. What, what's your favorite musical, Hamilton? <laughs> Looks like he knows that family matters. <laughs> oh, Jesus yeah, Christ, you get naked once. You set the bar high. Hell yeah. It's called front loading, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, where are you from? I'm originally from Miami, but I just moved here from New York. I was gonna guess Florida. I really yeah, I love Florida. that. That's where uh, Rick, Rick Ross, who we made exactly. a joke about, is from. Uh, not Miami, Rick Florida. Ross. Yeah, I'm asked still... every day, but I'm not. Hell yeah, definitely not. Every day you're guzzling. <laughs> you know what I wish? It's been kind of dry, you know? It's what? been kind of dry. In this neighborhood? Just go yeah. outside and open your mouth. It'll how, long, how, long have, how long have you been in LA, Mark? I moved here in November. In November, hell yeah. What was that like for you, your first time walking down Santa Monica Boulevard? Did anyone, <laughs> did everyone think you were a float parade? <laughs> it was actually great. It just felt like I was walking on sunshine, baby. Yo, wow. Yeah. Damn. So it's uh, it's easier or harder to find a good gay man here in West Hollywood than Miami. Because Miami, there's that humidity in the air. Everybody's exactly. always horny. Everybody's like fucking nasty. Yeah, you're dirty. Low, you know, because yeah. it's so hot. Yeah. But here, I don't know. People. People are different. A little you, you, sadiddy. A little sadiddy here. What's that mean? Sadiddy? Sadiddy, like, usually, like, into themselves, very, mm, mm -hmm. not my scene. Mm -hmm. No low hanging balls. No, where they at? There's gotta be a pair out here somewhere. You have a this preference. This guy's got low hanging balls right here. I can see it on his face. Yeah. You have a preference in uh, dudes? You like uh, white guys, black guys? Uh, uh, Papi chulos. What's that? Spanish. Oh, oh. Yeah. Back yeah, exactly. I think he's about to give you the old black tube sock, if you know what I mean. Do you shave your armpits all the way to the bone? No, I'm just hairless. Raise your arm up. Look at that. Wow. wow. That's fucking That's weird. weird. Looks like a, a young Asian woman's vagina. <laughs> Sorry. Too soon. Uh, um, Mark, uh, have you ever been with a woman before? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how far? Uh, in high school. It was great. Yeah, how Greedy far? son of a bitch. <laughs> Cool. I mean, you went all the way with it, or yeah, just I like, her. oh wow. <laughs> Sit in there. And was there something weird about, you know, it wasn't like her, it's right? It's just you know what you like, right? You know, right? You know what you like. But you had to try it out just in case. I had to. My mom like told me I had to. Was she there? She's like, get in there, son. <laughs> Uh, what, what, what did you like about it? Was just like the nee, 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 nee. No, it's not, that, it's not so much that I didn't like it, more so than I knew I loved it. Fuck <laughs> yeah. Look at that. So you've been here since November. What are you doing for a living? 
Um, <coughs> serving, blessing tables. Not, oh, yeah. not blessing, serving tables. Bubba gum shrimp? No, I wish. I love their shrimp. Um, I'm working at a chicken and waffle spot. Oh, chicken and waffles. Yeah. Fuck yeah. All right. Well, that's fun. I love chicken and waffles. What's going on? What did I miss over here? Oh, shit. I thought, he was inferring, I thought he was inferring that he fucked that first comic, Mikey. <laughs> oh. oh my God. It's not that funny of anyone else, but I enjoyed it. Did you do comedy in New York? No, I actually just started in January. Oh, what? Shit. You got a lot of, you got a lot of confidence. Oh, uh, yeah, the baby goat. You got good delivery? Wow. No, I'm serious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought you had been doing it for a while. Yeah, yeah. seriously. Yeah. We immediately love you here on this show, man. What else about you? What do you do for fun when you're not doing stand-up or anything like that? Uh, just like to chill, you know? I'm not really a crazy guy. What's your type, what's your, what's your idea of chilling? You seem like the kind of guy that would wear a robe at home. I do! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a robe and I have a lot of, uh, shit, uh, what's they call The things. Boas? No, not bolas, I wish. Uh, <laughs> ponchos. I have like a collection of ponchos. For those Latin men. Mm -hmm. That's how I get them. Ponchos? Mm -hmm. It's like, it's raining, girl. Put the poncho on and get in there. Do you ever sing in the wells? <laughs> I don't, but. I don't even know what you said. I'm very lonely. <laughs> is your real last name Sully? No, Mark Sully is my first name. Mark Sully? Yeah, hyphenated St. Flair is my last name. Whoa! Wow. Whoa! St. Flair? Are you fucking kidding me? Do you come from a long line of gay men? <laughs> my name is Mark Sully St. Flair. Yeah, like flower in French. Oh, wow. Saint Flower. St. Flower. Who has a hyphenated first name? And last <laughs> Yeah, that's weird. Double hyphenated? Double hyphenated. Wow. My mom made kindergarten very hard. <laughs> Two dashes. Wow. That's interesting. Okay. <laughs> Didn't sound like you thought it would. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mark, well, I mean, just fucking amazing performance. Please sign up again and come back again soon. <laughs> <laughs> the winner is of Malcolm Magic, Mark Sully. Wow, always an amazing new charismatic face on this show. Malcolm Hatchett couldn't make it tonight. Um, uh, he's on the road all week and weekend opening for the great Theo Vaughn. Out of North Carolina, Malcolm's getting back working, doing it. Baby boy's all grown up. Uh, oh, so for a uh, for a special surprise for you podcast fans, how many of you are real Kill Tony fans? <laughs> well, we have a special treat for you. Uh, we're gonna bring up someone who we haven't seen in quite a while. Uh, he's you know. Just one of the favorites here. He's a legend. He's from Las Vegas, Nevada. He's the man that brought us this bucket. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the return of Ithabar. Yeah, on with the sun. 
sunglasses, huh? Wait, what are you doing, Ichabod? Come on. Stand up, Ichabod. You're scaring me. He's a stool on stage. Is this the uh, homeless guy that this lady fucked earlier? <laughs> I, I got here a little late, sorry, Tony, the bus, you know. It looks like you forgot your teeth on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta check those underneath. I don't know if you've ridden buses. <laughs> Are you Chris Angel's unsuccessful brother? <laughs> uh, He's like Chris Angel's brother that works at a glory hole. <laughs> Ichabod, why the sunglasses for the interview part? Why, why, what's that to protect from? Because it's time for the interview with the vampire. <laughs> Ichabod, I will say this, is you've been on the show a few times before, and I must say, to be honest with you, you're pulling a bit of an Aphrodite and stunning us here, because that might have been my favorite set that I've seen of yours. You know, normally, it, uh, Normally you're a legend because, you know, we know that you love the show and you tell us how much it means to you and, you know, how it uh, keeps you excited about life with all these other things happening. You got this one thing you can look forward to and then all of a sudden it seems like you really put some stuff together and started roasting yourself there a little bit of the way through, huh? Yeah, I, I took advice from the panel and uh, shout out to Greg Fitzsimmons who yeah. gave me one of those jokes and I built up. Hey, fuck yeah, dude! Yeah. Great Simmons, head writer of the HBO show Crash. And for Ichabod. Yeah, I mean, Ichabod. Credit. Ichabod. I mean, the better credit. I'm head writer. writer. Could be. Can you take your hat off, because I'm hoping you're bald up there. What's up there? Is the, is the hair connected to the hat? Oh, that's some real rock and roll shit right there. You wouldn't take it off far. <laughs> I thought it was just cobwebs. A rat just scurried up. Now, uh, we had Uncle Ron on about a month or two ago. Is that his rival? Yeah, well, it's his best friend. Uncle Ron is was... a uh, blackjack dealer in Vegas who's like uh, 90 years old and uh, still does cocaine. With hookers. Wait, hook her up with, uh, what's her first name, Wood. Oh, yeah, Jess Wood. Uh, how's your Uncle Ron, and why'd you come out here without him this time? So it tells me you murdered him. <laughs> I haven't seen him in uh, quite a while. out there, you know, stop by. He's in the desert. He's Uncle I, Gone. <laughs> on behalf of uh, the entire staff and ownership at the dive bar, we would like to thank you uh -huh. for coming out there at Tens and Sis Up, and you're always will be welcome back. You Fuck rock. Yeah, we had a lot of fun in Las Vegas. A lot of people came from all different places around the country. They took our advice and you know, there's always cheap flights in and out of Vegas. It's a fun place where a bunch of people can get together, which reminds me, uh, you can see Ryan O'Neill fight Luis J. Gomez at the joint at the, at the Hard Rock uh, August 25th. And you know, where you can watch the stream at jasonellis.com. That's going to be an exciting thing. Ichabod, who do you like in the fight between... Uh, hey, over here, buddy. Who do you like in the fight between uh, Ryan O'Neill and Luis J. Gomez? Who do you think is going to win that? Whoever doesn't wear a mouth guard, judging by it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who do you think's gonna win? Just take a guess. Ryan or Lewis? I I'm Ryan, by the way. <laughs> I was hoping it would be. I, I, I can't I'm believe you did. spoiled it. I'm I sorry. thought for I sure he was gonna on. say Lewis. The good news is he might, he, might, he, might, he might still say Lewis. <laughs> who do you think's gonna win? Oh, that's a tough one to handicap, really. <laughs> Why don't you just take a guess? Just pick a name, flip a coin in your head. So, what, what, are, what, what is it a cage match? It's, yeah, 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 it's Ryan versus to the, Lewis. To the death? It's Ryan versus Lewis. <laughs> Who do you think's gonna win? You a fight promoter? Because this promotion is dynamite right now. Is this Dana White? What the, <laughs> by the way, how do you make a living selling your teeth to the tooth fairy? <laughs> with diamond teeth who you may want to talk to. You fit this her side one and your front. Ichabod, you are fucking awesome. One of my favorite things is to follow you on Instagram and check out your amazing diet uh, process. It's like, basically a lot of soda and frozen fish sticks. So, you're wondering... <laughs> Frito casseroles in there? I'm losing weight on that food. That might be the AIDS. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. 
Has anything else fun been happening in your life, Ichabod? We love you on this show, and uh, we're excited to find out any updates if you have any. Uncle Ron's out of the picture. Now he's got Cousin John. <laughs> Last week, for the first time, I got to open for a rock band in Las Vegas. The Scoundrels in front of a whole bunch of people is really awesome. Wow, you, you didn't see a comedy before the rock, before the rock band. That is yeah. cool. Stage time did you get? How many minutes? Uh, they gave me ten. I got up to five, and I kind of got nervous and bailed. <laughs> That's great honesty. You could have told us it was unbelievable. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, Ichabod. <laughs> did you? Were you responsible for bringing up the band after your set? Yeah. So, all right. I'll be back. I'll I'm sure this back. band smoked cigarettes. They were enjoying themselves, knowing that they had another five minutes, and so you've decided to bail five minutes in, and you, did you just bring up the band, or did you at least stall for five minutes? Did you just bring them up? Yeah, I was like... Were they all there? Were they ready? So the, hey, uh, by the way, welcome the Scoundrels! Hey, by the way, intro. an amazing intro. Hey, uh, by the way... <laughs> by the way... I try. I'm gonna do better next time. I just, I'm gonna really rock. It when you meet, when you open for a rock band. Yeah, next time. I'm gonna yeah. Do better. Did you do any of the jokes that you did here tonight? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. good. A couple old ones, a couple new ones. Did it go well at all, or was everybody just talking the entire time? No, it actually went decent. Really? Rock, yeah. rock bands tend to be a pretty tough show. Yeah. Was the band upset that he brought them out a little early? Yeah. Well, I, I came out with a little uh, energy and everything, and then... Really? Uh, you? No fucking way. Here it is. Give more. it up for the scoundrel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tried to, you know, work that, get the crowd going. Normally, those rock shows are like pulling teeth. It's fucking not easy. <laughs> can we see... Can you give us the intro? A recreation? <laughs> Five minutes. Uh, it's weird. Uh, I've never seen. I associate the Crypt Keeper with horror, but not introducing me. <laughs> I oh, love it. I bombed hard. Like, yeah. <laughs> I um, it. I'll wear it. Think about what's that drink you just chugged? Are you a heavy drinker? What is that? Yeah, Coca Cola. It's from <laughs> It's delicious. A little too late, but that's bad for the teeth. <laughs> is that classic or new? Classic. Yeah, is classic? Are you yeah, huh? You haven't seen Ronnie in a while? No, nah, a few days. We, we, we don't get to talk much. Uh, Cause I, he's I, dead. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, by the way, I don't, I'm starting to think, I don't know if he's my real uncle. <laughs> yeah, do you think he's well, playing a password on you? I think. <laughs> do you do 23 and me? <laughs> uncle Ronnie, you are not the uncle. That's a good Maury episode. I think if he introduced himself to you as Uncle Ron, there's a good chance he's not your uncle. <laughs> uh, so what's your plans for heading back to Vegas? You want back tonight? Yeah, I'm gonna stay up and then uh, turn back kids. into a bat. And <laughs> 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 he's, gonna, he's gonna leave five minutes early, I think. I look for stuff to do till about three, four in the morning, and then head downtown to catch the first bus out of there. And when do you feed? <laughs> What do you have to do till three or four in the morning? Yeah, it's a hard time because, yeah, it's hard to find stuff after one or two o'clock. Uh, last time, after Daddy made me chicken. Yeah! That Ooh, was, uh, shit! That Damn, that must have been crazy yeah. for your body to feel some vitamins getting in there, huh? Right. You know, chicken and all those delicious vitamins. <laughs> All right, Ichabod. Well, buddy, I mean, we fucking love you here on Kill Tony. Ichabod's bucket of destiny stays close to all of our hearts. We love you. Please come back anytime. How about one more time for the great and powerful Ichabod, ladies and gentlemen? Come on. He loves this show. What do you guys think? One more quick one? One last one?
Put your hands together for Robert Th Thompson. Robert Thompson. Here he comes. From the farthest possible corner. Seems to be very lucky down here. Very lucky people. Here he is, Robert Thompson, ladies and gentlemen. So I had asthma in elementary school, and they put me in special ed GE. Um, no, it was just my lungs that were slow. Uh, there were some characters in this class. This kid, Wyatt, he had the uh, energy of the Tasmanian devil, had the soul of a soldier, this kid. He, uh, he just grind his teeth all the time. <laughs> Hell of a tetherballer, let me tell you. <laughs> you know, there's also this kid, Chris, who had his head stuck to his shoulder. Like this, nicest guy. Hey, Rob, want a fruit roll up? Hey. <laughs> you know, I had a lot of remedial classes growing up, and I heard some downer things. I heard this teacher say that we wouldn't amount to much. And uh, I think that's kind of a bleak, out bleak outlook, if you ask me. Because I could just see Chris now. He's probably some hot, so <laughs> hot shot surgeon in LA, and I could just see all his Facebook profile pictures from this angle <laughs> with a fedora on at a wedding. Fuck yeah, push it into the limit, Robert Thompson. Thank you. Robert, this is what, your third time on the show? Yeah, third time. Third time. Good and luck. It's, and it's all been very recent, right? What'd you start, three weeks ago, four weeks ago? Yeah, like a month ago. Yeah. A month ago, yep. Well, welcome back. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Good to see you again. Um, ooh, Snow White, you got some attitude. What's going on up there? This guy tried to block me. Ah, is that true? You trying to block the, uh... No, no, the, my, my big ass last time was totally in front of Mr. Jeremiah here. So I, I'm, I'm mindful of that now. Um, it's Snow White. It's Snow White. I mean, yeah, Snow White, Snow White. He's a yes. big flopper. Uh, yeah. Big flopper. He's, uh... <laughs> We've got Frankenstein, now we gotta get Dracula back up there. <laughs> Uh, fuck yeah, Robert. So how long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, this is, I started doing it again like a couple months ago. Yeah. And uh, did it for two years, uh, a few years ago. So it's then me quit. back at it. We know a guy who counts all those years between as comedy years. Yeah. Comic. So oh, really? He, I don't know if that's official, but he, this guy, this particular guy does. Oh, wow. Okay, so five years. Yeah. Yeah. It took three years off. Yes, yeah. But technically. Technically five. Uh, this is a lot of math for me. I was in remedial classes, so uh, we'll get the uh, math guy, the yeah. teacher up here. Robert, is there uh, is there anything that's happened interesting in your personal life since the last time you were on two weeks ago? Yeah, actually, uh, I I play. I also do music. I play in a band, Dick Neptune. Uh, yeah, but, that'd be Mr. Joel. But you don't know how to play any oh, instruments, boy. right? Uh, I, I do the xylophone. Oh, the xylophone. Yeah. Wow. It must I, be a real I, hit band you have. Does anyone have a xylophone here? Or a recorder? Is this a high school marching band? You play? So no, no. It's, just, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a comedy punk band. I, I sing, but we, we were putting on the show, and it's, it was like a circus theme, and there's a guy I know that actually, like, Works with, with little people, with little people actors. Dwarfs? That, that's right. Dwarfs. And uh, where is the show? It, it was in uh, the Doll Hut in Anaheim. I just want to know so I stay away from the neighborhood. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's speaking of meth. There's a lot of that there. If you want to find it. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's a. I was supposed to have a little me, little Dick Neptune. And uh, he looked like me, it was crazy. They found something that looked they like They found me. a midget that looked like yeah. you. That's not that crazy to me at all. His name was Whitey. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the crazy part. He's, he, uh, I got a phone call that he passed away, like, drowned in a river, like, just today. <laughs> what? It, yes. So I'm Are you sure shocked. it wasn't just, like, a uh, gutter that, was, that looked like a river that happened to creek? Yeah, I, it, it, uh... It's a good closer. You should keep that bit, I think. Correction, his name is Drowning. Oh, wow. How recently did you work with this guy? Well, uh, I, I met him briefly, but he was supposed to do a show for us in a couple months. Oh. And, so, and he passed away. Right. He was 30. Yeah. Wow. What a wow. short life. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, number one taker of little, little people's rivers. Or, or 
still working with uh, Joel. Yeah, true. <laughs> or what's his name? Is his name right? Yeah. Dick's Dick Neptune. Oh, sorry. He drowned in what though? A, a river? Yeah, uh, Lake Mead. I don't know where that, I forget where that is. Oh, it's a lake. Isn't Neptune it's a lake. like a yeah. god of water or something? <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. From Little Mermaid. Wow, see, your midget drown. Yeah. Good God. Can you find, you can find another one? Uh, well, they said and they were going through it, and actually, uh, there was uh, a guy that looked more like Wesley Snipes, who I'm totally, I'd love to work with him. He yeah, why wouldn't you? Yeah, hell yeah. Oh, he doesn't need to look like you. Get no, a little no. Wesley Snipes. He probably can't swim either, though, so you might want to. Uh... He starred in the movie Razor Blade. <laughs> <laughs> if the second one dies, we're coming to look for I know. you. Uh, there's a curse here. I don't know. Wow. Oh, wow. no, a curse. <laughs> how's your, uh, how's your, uh, how's your love life been the past couple weeks? Anything? Any new Not developments? Not great. <laughs> My girlfriend also drowned in a river. I don't know what's going on. How do you know she's not crazy? How long have you known her for? Oh, uh, two years. So, oh. yeah, we were we were friends before. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. So how long? And you've been you were friends before, but how long have you been uh, having sex with each other? Um, uh, this this morning actually. No, uh, yeah. it was uh, a few months. Yeah. A few months you've been yeah. having sex. Yeah. She's not showing any signs of crazy yet. Um, not that I know of, but uh, my debit card. Is Whoa. Uh, Maybe in that homeless guy's there. wallet. Or yeah, the yeah, village yeah. guy's yeah. wallet. Yeah. Right. It's been like me. Wow. Do you think you love this lady? Uh, you know, I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of soon to say, but... Uh... That's a no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I do. Is she yeah. here tonight? No, no. I, oh, I wish. Yeah, yeah. It's been the driver's mother, everybody! <laughs> Oh, so that's why your debit card yeah, went missing. Yeah, I'm just being a little suspicious here. Uh, <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, uh... And what do you do for work? I, I, I push shopping carts, yes. So, oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah. You push shopping carts. Yeah, there's actually... There's a, there's a war going on. We, there's a Santa right next to Walmart. And, uh, you work at the Walmart, right? Yeah, you know, Sam's Club. Oh. And the Walmart dudes totally hate us, but it's funny, I feel almost pampered when I look at them, because they, like, the dude comes with, like, a potato sack over him, and he's missing teeth. Kind of like old Ichabod over there, he's missing teeth. Wow! How dare you! How dare you talk about Ichabod? I love Ichabod. You know what, Robert? Hey, you know what? You want to take this on at Ichabod? I got bad news for you. Tonight, you're getting on the Greyhound bus, and Ichabod's moving into your apartment. Teeth floating around and uh, DNA strikes him as ass cheeks. <laughs> the headless dwarfsman. <laughs> what is that, an Ichabody in your fucking bathtub? <laughs> All right, Robert Thompson, there he goes. He did it again. Thanks for coming on, Robert Thompson. Good luck to you. Absolutely nowhere. Look at this drawing by Ryan J. Ebelt, everybody. RyanJEbelt.com for all the friends here for the guys. Uh, check out the Dana Shin and O'Neill podcast, and uh, why not go to Vegas and check out the fight? 25th of August, it's yeah. the joint with the hard rock. JasonEllis.com to watch the live stream. Anything else? Yeah, watch me destroy Luis Gomez. Hell yeah. Phil Tony's going to Montreal, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Fort Wayne, Indiana, Nashville, Tennessee, Lansing, Michigan, Grand Rapids, Detroit, Toronto, and a bunch
bunch of stand updates, a bunch of other places. If you want to come see my uh, new, uh, never seen before hour, then that's at a bunch of different places. Go to TonyHinchcliffe.com for that. How about a hand for Snow White, Jeremiah Watkins? Huh? <laughs> Jeremiah Wonders is my new favorite podcast to listen to. Jeremiah flexes all of his amazing characters and his wild imagination on a show. Uh, we've all done it a couple times. Jeremiah, who'd you have this week? Andrew Santino. Wow, one of our favorites. One of the funniest guys. Uh, yeah. Follow me on social media at Jeremiah Stand Up. And then next month, uh, Reagan and Watkins will be headlining with Joel Berg in Huntington Beach and Phoenix. <laughs> wow, Huntington Beach and Phoenix. Pulling through with a strong Khaleesi, I believe, tonight. How about a hand for Chroma Chris, everyone? <laughs> Chroma Chris is on social media. Chroma Chris. Chris, what did you think about tonight's episode? It was very enchanting, Tony. Ooh. And how about one more time for the great and powerful Joel Berg, Joel Hyman. Yeah. Uh, Joel Berg is on all social media, mostly. Sorry, anything else, Joel Berg? I love you guys. Peace. Hell yeah, he loves us. Uh, Dennis and O'Neill, you guys are absolutely, I mean, two guys that I've always looked up to that I think are fucking amazing. Thank you so much for Thank coming you, back man. on the show. Thanks for having us. Hell yeah. Unbelievable fucking monsters. Make sure you check out absolutely everything they do. They're absolutely hilarious all the time. Brian Redband, get us out of here. That's an episode of Kill Tony. See you guys. Bye, guys. Thank you.